All right, welcome everyone to uh, Acquisitions Automation Review. At 4.30 in the afternoon, and I know you're all really bright and awake and ready for the sun, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, um, I'm Joe Reimers. I'm a product owner on Team Thunderjet. And Dennis Bridges. And so, yeah, let's get right down to it. So we're here today to talk about acquisitions automation and just for a little bit of level setting, <laughs> what do we actually mean by automation? And for purposes of, of this session, we're really going to focus on two primary areas. First, integrations, uh, integrations with external resources in particular that will help speed things along. Uh, and the other is work that we can do in Folio programmatically to streamline processes, reduce redundancies, reduce rekeying, anything that we can just do to make life more efficient. So those are really the, the two key areas we want to talk about. We're going to start by kind of discussing the, the current lay of the land and then talk a little bit about things we're working on. So start with uh, what we've got going on in ordering and our current state, the current release is Quisnalia. So what we would consider uh, automation as of Quisnalia, and you all know all of this, um, we do have support for Edifact ordering. Uh, we have support for mark record import with order data. So you output a mark file with order data and we can load that because that's still a lot easier than simply keying in a lot of orders. And we have uh, API, API integrations through an Edge API called Edge Orders. And underneath that is uh, a mod Gobi, which tells the Folio how to interpret incoming data from Edge Orders. And anybody can take that Edge Orders data and write a mod, whatever you want. I'd be really impressed if somebody could figure out mod Amazon. <laughs> um, we do have a number of uh, planned enhancements for that. And please don't hold us to the, the releases are speculative and subject to change. Um, but this is kind of what we're thinking right now. So it's penciled in. Uh, the first planned enhancement that we have is support for automated email orders. And right now, if you set up uh, within the organization's app, you can set up an Edifact order with uh, as an integration with all of the EDI details. And a uh, group from uh, Dresden and Leipzig is taking on the work to add uh, the ability to output email orders in much the same way. So instead of you can you can create the files or the orders within uh, Folio and then export them via email. So that's that's uh, very much anticipated. Um, and the latest that I have on that is that is probably looking more like Trillium than Sunflower, but they are going to begin working on this in the very near future. And I'm, I'm very excited about that because there's a lot of collaboration between uh, the Thunderjet team and the Leipzig team on this. We're talking back and forth, making sure everything is set up and working. Um, we are also adding support for additional API integrations. Um, and that is also expected probably in the Trillium timeframe. Uh, one thing we're talking about doing, and this came up in uh, in uh, the app interaction SIG meeting that was uh, we just had, is support for patron purchase requests. And this is a little bit um, we need to, we need to do some more requirements gathering on this. But um, so some libraries have uh, an interface, for instance, within the discovery where uh, if a person can't find a piece of material, they can fill out a form and say, I want to request this. Um, so we want to support that, but we also want to support, uh, for instance, selector lists. So if you create a spreadsheet or you have a home, a home built database that selectors can say, I want to buy this and it gets sent to the acquisitions department for the appropriate uh, 
handling, we'd like some capacity to support that as well. Anything that we can do to get reasonable lists of information, of, of order information in that Folio can use then to generate order data without having to key everything manually. Uh, I think there are a lot of things we can potentially do with this. Um, we're also thinking approximately trillion for that, but we're we're still we're working through the how that might look, but it's very exciting. We are also, this is a little bit um, kind of a, a, a niche thing, but for those libraries that work with multiple currencies or have to deal with uh, alternate uh, exchange rates. Uh, as you know, um, Folio currently has an API that queries the European Central Bank uh, on a regular basis and updates the exchange rates and can populate those uh, into the POL and into the invoice. Uh, and there have been requests for libraries that do not use the European uh, the European Central Bank, they would like to use alternate exchange rates. Perhaps they have a subscription. There are certain other uh, financial institutions that make those available via API. And so we're looking at possibilities for institutions to say, this is the exchange rate we want to use. This is the API integration. And this is how we want to fetch that. And I think there are a number of, of possibilities that we can do with that. But I think that's another area that we can make some good improvements and make your, make your data more accurate. For an order, it's an approximation. So within a few, few cents or one or two dollars, it's not normally important. For invoices, it can be very important. And we've got some uh, interesting things going on on the receiving side. We've put in a lot of work into receiving in the last year. So the, one of the biggest areas that we've done work in is uh, knowledge integration and uh, um, one of the German libraries uh, commissioned, uh, yeah, GBV commissioned, thank you, Serials Prediction Patterns. And that is live as of Quiznalia. Um, and I've been playing around with it. It's actually, it's it, it, it's quite nice. What this does is you can use the, the Serials app to generate prediction patterns and then populate those predicted pieces into the receiving app. Um, and then we've got additional things that we can do in the receiving app related to things. Uh, so if you have claiming active and you have predicted pieces and you know when it's coming and we know what the delay is, then we can automatically set pieces to late for claiming activities, for instance. It also allows much uh, greater granularity in terms of identifying, um, you know, what specific uh, volumes and issues you have received and when. We've got a, a number of uh, uh, enhancements planned for uh, receiving. And after we're done with this, if we have time, I'll walk you through, uh, I could walk you through the uh, edifact piece or the claiming piece, but we are uh, adding greatly enhanced claiming support. And we are moving from identifying what's late to enabling of, uh, well, we decided within the last two weeks we are going to create a full claiming app, which will allow you to review all pieces that are in late status. Uh, it will uh, then allow you to set those pieces to claim them now, uh, defer the claim for a period of time, or if you know the piece is unreceivable, you can mark the piece as unreceivable. Uh, Within, within Edifact claiming, uh, once you set it to send a claim, then an export job will run just like in the orders app, we'll transfer it via EDI to the vendor. We are also building in for, for uh, vendors that do not have uh, Edifact claiming capabilities, you will be able to define a simple file download, which can be an EDI file or a CSV. Um, which you can then just grab that and then email that file. And then our, our friends at uh, Sloop Leipzig are working on email claiming as well. And in addition to that, they are also adding claim cycles. So first claim, second claim, third claim. Uh, we're working through the details on that. Again, I am very, very excited about this because we're working concurrently in the same area and 
uh, kind of augmenting each other's work. So this is going to be this is going to be exciting. I can't I can't wait to see what happens. Uh, right now, I'm expecting um, that the email claiming support and the claim cycles will probably appear around Trillium. The Edifact claiming and the CSV download are scheduled for Sunflower along with the dedicated claiming interface. And if we have time, I'll show you what the mocks look up, mock, yeah, mocks look like for that claim interface. Um, down the road, I don't know exactly when this is going to happen, but there have been requests for Edifact serials receiving. And that is something that is also on our radar, but I'm not going to commit to any release yet. But I do know there's interest uh, for uh, providers of print serials that work with Edifact. Uh, we are going to add the ability to do that receiving as well. So the more we can automate and just allow, allow systems to talk to systems, the easier things will be for all of us. Finance. This is another really big one, I think, that uh, we're putting in place for Sunflower. And we are adding the ability to batch edit budgets. So we start within a ledger or within a group. And this is new that we're adding groups to this as well. Um, we've got a menu there. So in this case, we're looking at a ledger. There's a new section on the bottom, which is allocation tools. You can directly go to a batch allocation. You can download an allocation worksheet, which is a CSV. You can upload an allocation worksheet, which is the filled out CSV. And then you can view the logs because obviously anytime we're doing anything in batch, you need to have logs to review what happened. So we go to batch allocation. Uh, the next step is you select your fiscal year because we do support multiple fiscal years and we are going to uh, expand on our multiple fiscal year support uh, in the future. And then you get a screen that shows all of the funds associated with that ledger in that fiscal year. Uh, you can, it also shows the current total allocation, which we have labeled uh, total allocated before. That's current state. Uh, you can show the budget status, uh, current alloc the allocation increase, decrease. You can change your encumbrance and expenditures. And importantly, because this is a batch transaction, you have the ability to put transaction descriptions or transaction tags. So if you came into a pile of money in the middle of, of the year and you're able to increase the uh, allocations or something similar happens, you can tag that easily or put a description in that easily so that you can maintain a clean audit trail. Now, at the bottom, we've got a recalculate button which you have to recalculate before anything happens. So we've entered our increases and decreases in the allocations, just as an example. We've hit the recalculate button. On the left, under the fund names, a few of them have uh, little alert icons, and those are there to tell you you have made no changes to these, uh, you've, no, you've made no changes to these, to these budgets. Uh, it's not a problem, it's just to let you know that nothing has changed. Uh, so it's not going to be updated. And then we get a little warning showing that the fund has not been changed and will not be updated. And the logs will not reflect that fund has been updated. So it will be as if it's not been touched. What happens if you upload a CSV? So you can, you can also do this in a CSV. So if you have, you know, 150, 200 funds and you need to take a week to do it, you've downloaded the CSV, you fill it in manually, and you upload it. It's exactly the same thing. But as soon as you upload it, it already does the recalculate. So it's telling you right away, we've got uh, alerts. These three uh, items or these three budgets have not been updated. But suppose you add additional funds that do not exist in the ledger or in the group, it's going to tell you straight up the following funds are not associated with this ledger or group and will not be updated. And we tell you explicitly which one so they don't get lost. You can make note of them and say, okay, I need to update these, these uh, funds in another way. 
And this, this is most likely to happen if you take the previous year's allocation worksheet and then add some new, uh, remove, remove some funds, add some different funds, and then re-upload and there's a, a mismatch. Uh, not shown on this screen is um, if it really can't figure out what's going on, if something is really corrupt, then it will prompt an error and say, this file cannot be parsed. And I, I don't have a screenshot, but there then will be full logs that you can download. And when you download the log, you'll get the same view, but in read-only mode. So you can see exactly what happened with each fund. And you'll notice we've got the, prior, the previous allocation, the allocation change, and the total allocation following the change. I see a hand, yes. Is there a place where it's going to show the total allocations without all of the funds? Like I see the, the field that says total allocated after we recalculated, but if I had like one pot of money that I was trying to distribute between multiple and subject questions and wanted to know that I allocated it, like the numbers match at the end. Like, is there a way to do that? Is that's 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 actually really good feedback. And we haven't built this yet, so we can certainly take that and write it in. But that that is that is really good feedback. Thank you. That's why I love showing what we're planning is because we can approve it in real time. So um, yeah, that's really the big update to the finance app that we're making. Anne, I see you have a hand raised as well. Um. So, are you developing uh, in, this with the idea? Are you developing uh, this with the idea that can I can't you hear, hear you, me? Sorry. Hang on a second. Okay. Um, if you just grab this, I should put it back in there and go to the drop down there. Let's see. And the speaker try something. And so on. Okay, can you try speaking again? Hello? I still Hello? Here. Oh, there you are. Try again. Hello? Yay! Yay. <laughs> that was yours. So, um, are you develop developing this with the idea that we could download the CSV for, say, FY24 and upload allocations for FY25? And you would, you would, uh, the, the thought process is you would download for, ideally for FY25, or, or you could take FY24 or 25, but you would have to put in the fiscal year of FY25 in the CSV itself. So, um, and I think the way it works is if no, if the fiscal year exists, but the budgets do not, it'll work. Yeah, it'll create. Okay, so if we create the fiscal year but haven't set up the planned budget, um, it would still download a file, and then I we could edit it and then upload it as the original allocation, basically. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So you okay. create. Yeah, you create the fiscal year in advance, so Folio knows the fiscal year exists, and then at that point you can just download the worksheet, and it'll have the correct fiscal year. So. My next question, sorry to uh, monopolize, but um, could you by any chance just download certain fund types? Because like I have a couple of fund types that I enter allocations for, and then there are some types that I do not enter allocations for. They just have carry forward balances at year end. So right now it's per ledger or per group. Okay. Um, so if you create groups or if, if, if you have those, I have those, both, I have both. Okay. So if you have, if you have the, the carryover in one ledger and then not carry over in another, then it's, um, uh, not really an issue. Um, but you could also just separate them into different groups and work from those different groups. Okay. Is the type, so the type wouldn't be in the export CSV? No. I suppose it Potentially, it could be. It could be. Yeah, I mean, we can we can certainly look into this. Yeah. Okay. And I Thank see a you. question. Sure. Thank you. I see a question. Will the batch edit? Oh, okay. And and I had a similar question. I think I have my answer. Thanks. Okay. Good. 
Anything else before we move on? Okay. Yeah. And just going back a bit for patron purchase requests, we should have a module by Ransom or by Sunflower at the very latest. Okay. Um, we should be in contact. Yeah, I'd like I'd like to see what you've got there because maybe we can do something with that because um I, I've got I've got some ideas for an edge module that can really help with things. But yes, I'll definitely want to touch base with you before we do anything on that. Okay. Um, if there's nothing else. I think we're going to pass things over to Dennis. Sure. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to talk, I'm going to talk a little bit about invoicing, um, and then I want to highlight an initiative that started recently um, that looks at this kind of a, a, at a broader scale, I think, all the different things that we've talked about. So first of all, just a few words about invoicing. If in currently, in terms of automation, really, we're talking about the creation of or the generating of invoices and invoice lines. Um, and so far, we support basically EdEffect, like loading invoices via an EdEffect file through data import. Um, there is a feature for implementing like scheduled EdEffect imports for invoice files, but that has not yet been implemented. And it's still not, it hasn't been scheduled for a specific release. So it's a little hard to say when we might see that developed. Um, cause it's part of kind of data, data import queue functionality in Sunflower, we will be working on, uh, just, I think worth mentioning, although it's not really automation, but there's a reason why I have it here. <laughs> We're going to be working on the invoice edit history. So basically tracking all the changes made to invoices. Um, and I think it's important because it may it may be really useful once we enable additional integrations that affect invoice data. So that's something that will be we will be working on for Sunflower. Uh, it will look very similar to the orders application where you see an order history uh, that basically tracks all the changes made to a record at the invoice level and the invoice line level. In Trillium, between Trillium and Umbrella Leaf, really probably possibly even starting in Sunflower, but not likely to be released, uh, we are going to start working on an Edge API for the invoices application as well. This is something that was talked about early on um, and talked about a lot when the, when the Edge orders APIs were built. Um, but we essentially want to create APIs, create this edge module that can, will contain APIs that would allow you to update the status of an invoice, update voucher information um, to enable integrations with financial systems, third-party financial system. So uh, this work will be starting again, possibly starting in Sunflower, although like I say, we're still kind of juggling things, um, but definitely being worked on through sort of Sunflower Trillium cycle. Um, and alongside of that, we also have through data import at the moment uh, with EdEffect invoicing, for example, limitations when it comes to adding adjustments to invoices and invoice lines. And uh, if you're familiar with Folio, so adjustments typically would be used for, you know, tracking fees or, you know, shipping costs associated with whatever purchase it is you're managing. Um, and there need to be some improvements made to that flexibility so that you can kind of more seamlessly import your invoices via an effect. Slide. So I think it's probably evident that at the moment, within the realm of acquisitions, there isn't a ton of automation. Um, we do support, you know, a handful of things, but it's pretty evident that this is an area where we have room to improve. And it, it, 
in sort of starting to think about this and understanding the, you know, the importance of these types of enhancements, we didn't want to continue just kind of focusing on these specific applications that we have. We wanted to kind of take a step back and look at the acquisitions workflow in general. And at least at the outset here, uh, even though we, we have obviously implemented a few things, to take a minute to think about where we might be able to innovate in some way in the acquisitions workflow beyond what's already there. Uh, not trying to reinvent the wheel per se, but to take, uh, to come up with a bigger plan, a broader plan for acquisitions integrations for the long term. And so the, the way we're planning to do that is um, to essentially, we, we, I think over the years, we could say we've been collecting suggested enhancements for uh, vendors or from, from users, from different vendors, from you know, competitive analysis between Folio and other platforms. Uh, we know that there are certain opportunities out there for integrations and for automating acquisitions workflows. Um, we've put together a group that at the moment is called the Acquisitions Integrations Discussion Group. <laughs> it's a mouthful uh, late in the day. And essentially this group has so far looked at kind of broad acquisitions workflow uh, and built out from kind of start to finish. There are obviously a lot of different ways that an acquisition could start. It could be a selector picking something. It could be maybe a suggested purchase or something along those lines. So a lot of different places where this workflow can start. And ultimately it ends with, well, typically ends with paying for the thing, you know, receiving the thing, paying for the thing. Possibly there's some claiming and renewal and all that kind of stuff. Um, so we've defined those workflows. Uh, we've met already before WolfCon once this group met, but it's not a closed group. So if you're interested, uh, it would still be really valuable to join, I think, this discussion. If you're interested in automation and and thinking of thinking a little bit about where the opportunities are for folio to to do things better in acquisitions, to put it simply. Um, so meeting two with this group will focus on completing value stream maps for the two different order types that we have in Folio today. And what those essentially are, I think I have a picture here. This is very much still a draft. And yeah, it looks like chaos. This is gonna take a little bit of time and it's gonna be detailed. Um, but essentially for each order type, we are mapping out how information flows and the process by which that workflow is completed. Um, and through the process, none of you can read this. This is basically <laughs> uh, miniature. So I'm testing, this is an eye exam now all of a sudden. <laughs> but essentially you look at each process, you, you try to identify what, how much time it would take and the time between a process. So one of the interesting things about a value stream map is that it's kind of focused on identifying the time it takes uh, to get through the process in general. So by mapping all this out, we will hopefully have a, a great visual to use to see where the suggested enhancements might make improvements. So we're gonna align the information we have so far uh, with a more detailed overview of the actual workflow itself and what parts of the workflow currently take time and what others maybe don't take as much time. So uh, in doing that, we wanna figure out where the opportunities are. I'll just go back one slide. Meeting number three, although meeting number two, this could take more than one session, but let's assume it goes quickly. Um, in meeting number three, we'll discuss the sort of pain points, as I mentioned, that we identify and evaluate the, the potential solutions as far as like what kind of impact that they could have at the very least, because we wanna start building a case for which of these enhancements we pursue first. 
Um, so again, it could be any area of acquisitions that this kind of highlights. And I didn't really want to say anything about it, but it's probably worth mentioning. You know, there's been some discussion about artificial intelligence at the conference here. Um, I, I don't think any of that is necessarily off the table for, for discussions in this group. It would benefit us, I think, to think a little bit about maybe where, you know, we could think a little bit outside the box uh, and, and possibly enhance workflows in that way. Uh, so there may be more than three meetings, but time will tell. And I guess, yeah, we'll, we'll open it up to questions. But uh, but yeah, so it'll find the, the document for the, or the publication for you. You send in the request, and so there may be some interesting. Some yeah, there. they didn't talk to us about this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like I think we need to talk to each other. No, that's excellent. I I know that. Um, I'm trying to think of the library name now. Excuse me, but but outside of Folio, uh, like some libraries have built purchase request systems outside of Folio. But there isn't a there there aren't uh, like an ideal set of APIs right. you know in our edge module for managing those or converting them into an order. You know, do we want that to create an order or do we want it to create some other type of object, you know, a pre-order or something like that? Um, but yeah, thank you for mentioning that because. Yeah, and we're, kind of thing we're thinking about. We're also looking at some of the value add. So we have a uh, uh, patron or faculty member who's you know placing a purchase request. Um, if the system could automatically then figure out the whole placement without the acquisitions library having to do it, if it just like shows up as soon as that, as soon as the order is approved, the whole gets placed. If we can work out that business logic, I think there's a value add there. And it's, also something we're thinking about. And I know it can be done. It's just a matter of working out that business logic. So that's also uh, part of what we're doing, but we'll you know, have to talk with the, with the circulation folks as well. But that's kind of in our, in our line of thinking. And we would very much, so if you know who these libraries are, uh, we would very much appreciate that outreach and welcome them into these conversations. Yeah, because, that's right. Should we? Should we? Should we? Lehigh, yeah. Yeah, it's got um, the, the reason Jira. The yeah. It's a Jira to do uh, selection. There was a session uh, right before lunch today, a year end automation session. Yeah. It was uh, Ian from Canton, Jeremy from Texas AM, and they were mapping out, doing the exact same thing, but for year end acquisitions. Uh, and they built a whole, they mapped it all out, and it all worked out. Yeah. And they were building this workflow automation. So it's like when this happens, Fire off this command, and when this happens, and they they've got the infrastructure in place, but no UI yet. Oh, that's so you definitely yeah. talk to Jeremy mm. uh, and Ian because they're they're already in development with some automation on acquisitions, but for year round. And I think what you're going to look at yeah. is more print, so it might be good to collaborate. Very much so. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think there was some comments about the fact that ERM was, was being moved first just because a it's it's you know it's already integrated in some way and just it's inherent you know even the way that you think of buying and things that they don't have to worry so much about shipments you know what about this yeah you know, you're already partially there right yeah it makes sense i think they're building at texas state and they're building an agnostic workflow engine yeah so, yeah they just don't have a you want for it <laughs> so if you can't script <laughs> yeah they're there. using an open source um uh, component yeah Something like that. Um, interesting. Are there any other questions or comments? You know, I'll hope it will end early. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it. Um, 
yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with us ending a little bit early. If you do, you know, if you think of other things, or again, if you are interested in participating in this group, you can always Slack me your email, um, or there is a sign-up page, page in the wiki. If you just search for acquisitions integration, you'll see it there, acquisitions integration discussion. Thanks very much.